guys, it's Kelly from Team Imperious and TCG Weekly here. I wanted to kind of kickstart a potential new um, segment for our channel. Uh, this will be what I like to call uh, budget, good budget cards, basically, uh, for Force of Will. And um, this is kind of a test video, so tell me if you guys like it. Uh, tell me what... Um, what you thought about the cards I picked, if it's something you'd like to see more of, or if you'd want us to stick to something different, or if you thought maybe there's something I should improve. So just let me know how you think, or excuse me, what you think. But this is going to be a short video, uh, not too long. And basically what I've done is I've gone and picked five commons and uncommons from each color in Force of Will. And I'm going to talk about each one, why they're good, and... Um, basically cheap cards that I think will really help people who don't have a lot of money to expend on super blinged out decks, especially because right now with the whole starter deck thing, I think budget decks are really going to be the way to go for people. And a lot of these cards are actually staples even in good decks, so it's kind of nice. So we'll start with uh, Light. For Light, I picked the Emperor with new clothes. Uh, he is a three drop, one white will to anything. 700 attack, 700 defense, fairy tale human. His effect says enter, destroy all addition resonators your opponent controls. And his continuous effect is opponents cannot add addition resonators. The reason I picked him was because he kind of deals with a problem that I've felt a lot. Um, if you have people who play kind of the semi Voltron decks, um, which is kind of an easy way to go right now because most of them are commons and uncommons, so they're cheap, they're easy to get. Um, a lot of times it's really difficult to deal with a giant, like, 13-13, 18-18 with flying, first strike, whatever have you, coming at you in the face, swinging for half your life points. So, uh, he's really good. He bombs all of them off the board when he hits, and as long as he's on the board, your opponent cannot add more. Which, while it doesn't get rid of all additions, because let's face it, that would be busted, he gets rid of the ones that are specifically attached to resignators, which is good, because it'll basically even out the board a little bit, especially if you're playing against um, a deck that really focuses on pumping their creatures with additions. Also, he's a fairy tale, so if you decide to run him in a fairy tale themed deck, uh, there's a couple ways, different ways to protect him, like uh, Aesop. So, good card. That's why I picked him. Um, also, he's a 7-7, seven, seven, which is a pretty decent number, so. Next up for red, I picked Hunter in the Black Forest. I think Hunter in the Black Forest is actually legitimately my favorite one-drop in the game right now, even though, or low-rarity one-drop, even though I don't actually play red. <laughs> which is odd, I play Dracula, but I don't play red in it, which some people think is a little weird, but that's just me. So he is a one drop for one fire will, 300-300 uh, fairy tale human with swiftness, meaning when he, you drop him on the board you can attack or you can tap him for effects. Um, simply the fact that he is a 300-300 is what makes him so good. Um, most of, like for instance, I play Dracula, my one drop in my deck is a 200-200, so instantly your 300-300 this guy is better than my one drop. So, that's why I like him. He's really good. Uh, he is a common, so he's super easy to get. Uh, and honestly, like, I would run him even if you had a blinked out deck, because he's good. But yeah, definitely a good common to keep out for. For blue, I picked one inch boy. He is a two drop, uh, one blue will, or one water will, excuse me, and one from Crimson Moon Fairy Tale, he's a 100-300 Fairy Tale Human. Uh, his ability says continuous. When this card deals damage to a Resignator, destroy that Resignator. Now, he seems really small, but he can deal with a lot of big problems that you might have to face, unfortunately. Like, even though he's a true drop for such a small body, his effect means when you put him on the board, essentially, assuming that you can, like, actually get him to block. I mean, he doesn't have flying or anything, but he'll be able to deal with a lot of your problem. Big cards that you just can't get off the board any other way. So, that's why I like him. He's a common, so he's easy to get. Um, at the very least, sideboardable against uh, decks you know that get really, really big for no reason. Like, say you're doing Musketeers or something, or you're playing against Musketeers and you know they keep dropping that huge 
dude, or there's one with Pierce that just keeps getting really annoying. Like, you can know you can at least get rid of them with one of your creatures that's going to die anyway when you block. So, that's why I picked one inch boy. Next up is by far, in my opinion, the best uncommon in the game. And something that really should have been a rare, but whatever. Gretel. She is my pick for the wind, grass, air, whatever that element's called. Um, <laughs> trees. <laughs> Color. She is a two-drop. 200-200 Fairytale Human. And she says when she enters, reveal the top card of your Magic Stone deck. If it's a wind Magic Stone, put it into your Magic Stone area. She is, in my opinion, my... Well, not in my opinion. She is my favorite ramp card. Because when she enters, if you're running wind at all, you're going to get an extra mana. And because it doesn't enter tapped, you can use that mana again that turn. So she is fantastic on top of it. She has a slightly bigger body than um, the... Or at least more attack than the uh, Elvish Priest, the guy you can tap for a mana. So that's why I like her. Um, she kind of has a counterpart in Hansel, who is a rare. But he's there still pretty cheap together. You can make a Hansel and Gretel kind of theme deck if you want out of like three cards, four cards. So she's a great card. Um, she's a staple in my Wind, Bla uh, Wind Darkness Dracula deck. She's really good um, and I love this card. She's an uncommon like, she should have been rare. She's so good. And then lastly, I picked Pumpkin Witch, who also I think should have been a rare, or at least an uncommon, but she's actually a common from Crimson Moon Fairy Tale. Uh, Pumpkin Witch is a three drop, 300, 800 Nightmare Witch with an inner ability. She says when she enters, each resonator you control gains flying and first strike until, flying and swiftness until end of turn, which is amazing. I have won multiple times simply by dropping a Pumpkin Witch late game and just swinging out. They can't do anything. And even if they do have a creature with flying, they can block one. Not all of them. And chances are, I'm swinging with Dracula, who already has flying. Um, he's going to steal it, and then you can drop this and give it swiftness. So you can even, in vampires, you can take their stuff and then hit them with it for game. Um, or you can just use her to deal a lot of damage, even up the board, give your stuff flying and haste, swiftness, and just wreck face. She's really good um, because she's a 3-drop, slightly more of a late game card, just slightly, maybe mid-range, but still really, really good. So, that is my short little budget Force of Will video. Let me know what you guys think, uh, what cards you would want to see me cover. Uh, if you liked my picks, if you didn't like my picks, just go ahead, comment down below, and let me know what you think. Thanks, and have a good day.